Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access and the 4 Science Update where I am going to continue my, well I guess we can call it career mode, but uh, we'll just call it exploration mode and we'll pick up from my save there. Duna Monument. Well we still have to get to Duna, Duna Monument. That's 1600 science. That's quite a pinpoint location and our problem was communications last time. Uh, we didn't have enough communications on our probe, so let's just see exactly how much we need and maybe just send another probe. It's like the simplest thing to do. It seems like it's possible to get that particular kind of science with the probes. So, well, orbital characteristics, so that's what we want. So, semi-major axis is 20,000 kilometers and Kerbin's is... 13,600. So let's just say we need 35,000 if Kerbin's on the opposite side of the sun from Duna. And let's see if we have an antenna that can do that. 36,000 kilometers. Well, that's just perfect, isn't it? Five per second max. Well, hopefully we don't have to use it at max. All right, how much does that cut down on our Delta V? Having that balance on top is interesting. It's pretty big. I hope its center of mass is right at the center. Really, really hope that. Okay, so that cuts down our delta V. But not by that much. <laughs> not by that much. It seems to be alright. So, Duna Pro. Duna Pro. Hopefully just being able to control it will be good enough as far as getting us to the right location. We were only three kilometers away last time. And that's when I didn't have the ability to throttle or point in the right direction at all. So yeah, I figure that we could probably just do it with this. But let's see, let's make sure that we are at the right time here. Oh, we can't go directly to the tracking station station okay so Duna where are you Duna's behind us we're gonna have to spend a lot of time to catch up is there anything else we can do in the meantime I mean but everything else would probably take no time at all but anyway let's just see wheels no eccentric will do while we're on our way out 200 tons to Minmus. It's only 28 science. Sort of interesting. Oh, uh, geostationary orbit. Well, we can just knock that out pretty quickly. Orbit Kerbin with uh, that Mephalox fuel tank and a docking port. Okay, well, we can track that too. Do we have that part, even? I don't even think we have it. That's in this tier. Um, I think. I think that's the Jumbo 64 that they wanted, right? Mm. It doesn't say, does it say it has to be full? I don't think it says it has to be full. Well, I mean, ultimately, in order to go up the tiers, we have to get these top ones anyway. So, I'm gonna unlock that one, because otherwise we can't do that mission. Uh, but, I'm curious whether it actually needs to be full or not. Landing 200 tons on Minmus is hard. But, anyway, we'll get to that. Let's get the Kyo Station Reorbit one done first. That could be done with this, but this is not the... ...smallest thing that could possibly do it. What's the range of the probe core, anyway? All right, there's no distinguishing thing with relay antennas or anything like that. We've got way too much delta V for geostationary orbit. I guess what we could do is just omit that stage. And I'll cut down on the costs a bit. The fake costs that I don't even think I need to pay attention to. Well, that'll make me feel better. Okay. Let's do, so this geostationary orbit launch. Too bad I can't see the mission parameters in here. It doesn't, doesn't really tell me about the mission. 
That's one downside. I would like to see the mission details in here instead of hopping back to mission control for those details. Okay, let's go. Could have gone in daylight, it wouldn't matter. No problems, pretty much through maximum dynamic pressure. Oh, overheating. Let me just cut that. I don't think the fairings are gonna help, right? As far as the heating is concerned, it's still going up, isn't it? At least it seems like that. Cool down, please. It's nighttime, even. Apparently, it's the decouplers, potentially. Well, we can't exactly get around having decouplers, can we? But I could separate it. Our probe has enough delta V to get to Keo stationary orbit. We'll just deorbit this stage. We'll be clean about it. Okay, that's good enough. Five thousand meters per second, I mean. Okay, so I think it was two thousand eight hundred sixty-eight. Well, that that's what Keo stationary orbit ought to be, but I, their number was probably a little bit off from that. Okay, can we? Yes, we continue burning during this warp, or warp. Okay, yeah, this is the eccentric orbit one. About that. 2,866. Let's see if that's close enough. I think it said 1,010 meters per second it wanted. That was its sort of mark for Keo stationary orbit. It wanted the speed. Okay, boosting up. The ant engine is definitely not so bad when you can time warp through its burns. Up, 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 up. Why are you turning? Hmm? Prograde. Prograde is still where it was. I should just slap the antenna onto here anyway and send it over to Duna. Save me a launch. Okay, we've fulfilled that, um, but I do want to actually, hold on, I think it's supposed to be 1010, so there we go. Alright, so we've definitely got that, let's go back to Mission Control. It's eccentric, we got. Thanks. And Keo Stationery. All right. Well, I guess we'll toss up a little fuel tank, but it needs a docking port, and we haven't unlocked docking ports. Hmm. Well, I guess we have to unlock docking ports, but do we want to unlock... Well, basic docking has the standard docking port. I guess we'll... I, I was tempted to just go for the tiny one. <laughs> But all right, all right. We'll unlock basic docking instead. It's only 50. And then we'll have a depot. So let's launch a depot. This will be the biggest rocket we've launched in this by far. And I'll try and launch the Rocketmax fuel tank with full fuel. No good reason not to use the smallest one, except reaction wheel might be good. Maybe we should have reaction wheel. Wow, that's big. That's practically... No, well, it's not quite the size of the lander cam, but it's pretty big. 0.2. But... Uh, it's a good idea. Ah, uh, we don't have the medium-sized fairing. We'll just pretend as aerodynamic somehow. We, we do have this decoupler. So that's good. The uh, mainsail exists. 
Uh, that's not gotta be good enough, though. We should put some propulsion on that. I just won't fear the drag. Uh, I wish I had the smaller nose cones, though. But we can use the Oscar B fuel tanks. Well, those nozzles are pointing upward and will cause drag, but... They're small. <laughs> They're small. Should I make it tall? Well, it'll be interesting. It'll be an interesting test if we make it tall. If we use some of the payloads fuel in order to get to orbit, I'll. I hope they'll accept that, and I'm gonna accept that. All right. So, Urban Depot. Daylight. Okay. Well. Um. Yeah. Go. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm not clear on the situation here, so... Okay, good, good. Should roll 90 degrees, but meh. We are past the speed of sound. It's doing alright. Okay, off they go. No problems there. Uh, maybe this will do the whole orbital thing, too. Close. I think we just need to do a small burn with the rock max fuel tank. So if we have two decouplers, is it twice the heating? <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of reaction wheel power with this though. Let's knock off that nose cone though. Not that. That. Ah, uh, see it's overheating already. Lots of stuff is overheating. Those are the solar panels. Well, and that docking port, maybe? Okay, we're just deorbiting this stage. And now we have to control from here, because the... Spark engines are pointed in the opposite direction. Okay, but we can wait until Apoapsis, and we should get our solar panels out, too. The Mighty Sparks, our first use in this series. Can they work with Time Warp? Seems like. Okay, it's satisfied even though it's not a full Jumbo 64 fuel tank. Let's try and put it into a better orbit, though. Maybe it should be part of a station. I'll say that's okay. 150 kilometers-ish. Lots of Delta V because it's just a fuel tank and it's not pushing anything. But what about this docking port overheating? Not cool off? It's, um... It's really persistent about being hot. Well, let's see if it's still hot when we go to mission control and come back to it. Okay, fuel stations in space. Yes, there are. Legal didn't read within our uh, fine print. Okay, fine. I am not in that department. Okay, we really need to get to the Duna window and do that now. But first, let's double check on the station and see if it's still overheating. Nope, it just showed a glimpse of it, too. Yes, it is. So, going away and coming back doesn't help. Probably saving and reloading the game, maybe? Well, we'll find out some other time. Duna. Let us wait. You simply do not have interesting contracts. Oh, this is still tied to the time warp at the station. Minmus probe launch is out of EC. That's probably okay. Alright, uh, yeah. Let's go to the space center and come back in so we can time warp. Yeah, that seems good enough to me. So, we've got the antenna. It says it's got the range. Let's see. 
Everything looks good. Go. This is basically our equivalent of Atlas, I guess. <laughs> no three engines or anything, alas. But we don't need that kind of power. Just got the right fairing, that's all. Going a little bit shallow for it, but we're past the speed of sound. Let's do that at the same time there. It really doesn't like me changing staging. In flight, especially. Okay, go. I wonder why it says lack of stellar exposure right then when we've still got a fairing around it. I guess we'll dump the fairing now, though. Yes. Ooh. Not a big fan of that separation, though. Alright, that's good enough for now. Let's see about going to Duna. Mm, no, let's target Duna. They haven't fixed that one yet. Can we... I still would like to click on its orbit and target it like that happens in KSP-1. Uh-oh, crashing into the moon. Okay, I'll wait in orbit. Still have a moon encounter. Oh, I give up. Fine, I will take this for now and then we'll fix it later. Uh, well, there is a periapsis. It's fine periapsis. Uh, but once again, it doesn't show me the Duna encounter unless we're like... Unless we make a node here. Okay, 1.5 million meters. Well, we're still paying a lot for the correction, but... I feel like I'm willing to do that. We need to be fairly inclined in order to hit that spot up there. This looks okay. Okay, that's good. So that'll be a mid-course correction. And we are not recharging. Let's fix that. Okay, we are now recharging. On to mid-course. Well, okay. On to the moon encounter. There it is. Off goes the moon. And on to our mid-course correction. Ike periapsis. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Still showing our old orbital info, I think. Yeah, pretty sure we're not only 113 kilometers away from the sun at periapsis. Okay, Ike. <laughs> Be that way. Alright, let's go over there and fix it when we get there. Let's see, how's our power? Lots of Ike PE. <laughs> 58 kilometers, it says now. Well, as long as we actually have a periapsis and not a little smack into the surface of Ike, I suppose it's alright. Ah, uh, we're losing power. There's Duna and Ike. Whoa, 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 okay, 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 okay. That was too quick, too quick. Okay, not so close encounter with Ike. And back to Duna space. But that's too low. Alright, now we'll take that. Well, we have captured. It's all up to the ant now. We'll need a little bit more inclination. But this is not the place to do it. Around here-ish seems good. Go. It's 
surprised it hasn't told us about any science, though. Hmm. Yeah. I guess it doesn't do any science unless we get the science points for actually landing at the Duna Monument, which is substantial, so... I mean, that's really what we're going for. Hope it can get at least that, but the Minmus probe did it on Minmus, so it should be able to get it over here. So I want to just sort of plop in directly. 3,600 meters per second. We're going way too far, though. No, we're passing it. Stop. Oh, is this thing, uh, like, rip apart in the atmosphere, though? Uh, I can't believe I missed by this much when I was actually able to steer. My thrust weight ratio of the one ant engine is clearly not good enough around here. I blame the antenna, it's too heavy. Scooching on over there. <laughs> Just sort of scooching on over there. Don't have a whole lot of control. I've got the little reaction wheel inside the Octo 2. No RCS, and the ant engine doesn't gimbal. This is how NASA does it, right? <laughs> Gotta be coming down close right now, right? You should probably just wait and see. It seemed like a much smaller monument area than the one on the moon or Minmus, so that's a bit of a problem. How close do I need to get? Hmm... Doesn't it seem close enough. Get in balance now. Oh boy. Better. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, probe. No. Oh. Whoops. Oh. 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 I don't think it's close enough. Okay, well that's what it looks like. I don't know how to... I, I guess we're gonna have to send a Kerbal. I don't think this is good enough. Uh, but we lost our communication device anyway. We got no science out of this little guy. Yeah, let's just send a Kerbal. Gosh darn it. <laughs> 